Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul. We are still working on Noah's copy of Startling Comics number 48. And last episode, you saw me take the cover, plus all of the inner wraps, orient all of them, trim the Japanese paper from the mending, and those went back in the cold press. They're all in order. They're ready to be reassembled. But we need a good staple to do that. Now, I think Noah's copy of this comic was assembled incorrectly with one staple. I've done the research and most of the copies that I can find of Startling Comics number 48 have two staples. And it's also 1948 or 1949, well after the war, there was not steel rationing going on at the time. So I do believe it was supposed to have two staples and it was manufactured as an error. So it had one, it came to us with one. This is that staple. I labeled it. I labeled which side was the top. At the time I took it out, I said, well, it's rusty. We'll see if we can reuse it. it. You know, maybe it looks good. I do believe this is the original staple to the book, but I don't believe we should use it. And the reason why is if we look right here, you'll note it's very thin right there from rust. So, I told you before that when I've measured staples from comic books, any era, I've always come across diameters of the wire between 20 and 22 thousandths of an inch. This is rusty and it's 17 thousandths. Could I clean this up? Yes. But right in here, this is a weak point and it's probably going to break either when I try to reassemble it or at some point in the future. Because this book only has one staple, we need that staple to be very strong. So I'm going to be making a new staple for his book. And we are going to be using this staple as a template. Now this staple follows all of the measurements that I have explained to you on the channel before. It's a half inch across here, minus basically the width of the wire. And then the arms are approximately a quarter of an inch. This one's slightly longer. It's mostly straight. This one's bent more, so this one's bent, so I don't know that that's helpful, but in the bent state, it's about 280 thousandths. So, those are the measurements we will be trying to recreate. And I will save this in the correct orientation if we need it for further reference. All right. So the width of this block is 265 thousandths. So if we put a piece of wire through and bend it, and if it's flush here, those arms are going to be about the correct length, we could extend it a little bit beyond if we wish. Better to have it a little bit long. So I have my nippers here. I have my 24 gauge galvanized wire. This is what I explained to you before you can use. This is available on Amazon. I have a link down in the description below with an affiliate link that you can buy it. So this is 21 or 21 and a half thousandths. I don't want to use this part up here that's got all these bends in it. Once it's bent, it's tough to get the bends back out. So I'm going to go ahead and nip this off. Put that in the scrap. All right, and I think this section right here is going to be long enough for us. I'm going to go ahead and nip it right here. And we'll trim it to length. It's 1.2 inches. That should be plenty of length for us. All right. Now I'm going to use this block slightly differently than you saw me use it before. I'm going to use it to bend the arms. So I'm going to put the wire in. I'm going to let it exceed just a little bit the block and then bend it. And I got a pretty decent bend out of that. 
double check the length of the arm. Plenty. Now we have to do the other, we want to bend the other arm half an inch. And that's why I have this tool that you've seen me use before. This is just a bamboo sliver. And I'm going to bend there. And I'm going to use it to tighten up this bend just a little bit too. So I want a slightly sharper radius than I got from the other tool. Okay. I got pretty good sharp radii that I'm happy with. Might sharpen this one up just a little bit. Good. All right. Got pretty sharp radii now. We could check the radii against the one here. It's pretty similar. Now you'll note this staple doesn't have straight arms as you know really no staples do at least ones that are bent the way that these are bent you see that the arm bends here and here and that when this is folded down you won't have contact to the entire arm on the paper what will happen is you'll touch the paper with this point down here somewhere then you'll have a little bit of relief and then it'll go through and then same on this side a little bit of relief and then it'll be touching down right here and that's because anybody who's played with a stapler knows that the way the staple pinches the paper is by coming into contact with something like this and the straight arm comes down and is curled in and as it curls in it curls like that rather than just bending like that so we're going to attempt to recreate that we don't have a practical way to bend the staple into that shape. But I have here a pair of hemostats. These are just inexpensive hemostats that I have wrapped electrical tape around the jaws so that I don't mar my metal. And I'm just gonna give the arm a little bend with these hemostats. Like that, okay? So I don't love this little wiggle right here. So I'm gonna try to flatten that out a little bit. But otherwise I think this is looking pretty good. I might not be able to do it with this tool. Oh, that worked. I think that's probably going to be satisfying enough. I can also do it with these hemostats. There we go. That took the little wiggle out. All right. Now, we've got something that resembles the staple we want. I think the arms are too long. At least this one is. We're going to have to trim it. Let's compare it to our template. How's that arm? Too long? How's that arm? Way too long. So we're going to trim them both, as we expected. That's why we cut it long. That's why we knew we were going to be doing that. I'm just eyeballing how much I trim them. And it's not an exact science. You'll note that on the original staple, the arms are not the exact same length. So I think we have a reasonable proxy here and we can give this a shot and see how it works. All right, I've retrieved the cover. I have the inner wraps just off to the left here. Here's my staple. The holes line up pretty good. I've checked them on a few of the inner wraps as well. 
I wish I could tell you that there was an easy way to do this, but there isn't. It's always, well, there isn't one that I found. It's always awkward and I always struggle a little bit. So we'll just do the best we can. And I'm sure there will be many pages that do not go as smoothly as that one just did. All right, I told you that was pretty tedious, but we have the whole book on, reassembled with the correct orientation. I'm gonna give these staples just a little, so bend the arms down just a tiny bit to keep it a little bit tight, but still so that the pages can move. I'm gonna flatten up an edge. This center wrap doesn't really want to line up. There, I think that's a little better. All right. See how nicely these arms lay down because we put that extra little bend here and we made sure that this radius was correct. They really lay down beautifully. All right, I'm gonna put this book in my humidity chamber and then when we come back, we will put this fold back in it and we'll do our final press. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I replace a staple on a golden age book materials you use, the things to watch out for. If you got a better uh, method for putting the staple back in the pages, please share it with me. I know that that's tedious. I just haven't come up with anything that works better than that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in trying this out, I have links in the description for all the materials that I use where you can purchase them on Amazon. So until next time, take care of one another.